Happy New Year, Lighthouse Church. I'm Kristen, one of the pastors here. And today we want to invite you into a pilgrimage of short meditations as we enter the new year. I'm Noah. I'm Kristen's son. I've, I've been promoted for the day. Um, I actually went on one of these uh, pilgrimages earlier this year in September, um, the Camino de Santiago. And uh, you'll hear a little more about that later. Um, but you know, on a journey, you have various land, landmarks, signposts, um, places that help you orient where you are. Um, and in the journey of life, the new year is one of those landmarks. And so today, uh, we're going to take a pause to notice where we are, to notice where we've come from, and where we would like to be going. And we're reminded of the journey of the Magi, the three wise men who came to visit the newborn Jesus, the Messiah, having responded to the prophecy and led by a star. We're reminded that during this time, which is still within the 12 days of Christmas, between Christmas Day and Epiphany that marks their arrival, that we too are on that journey toward Jesus. So as we start this service, we want to invite you into a place of worship, worshiping Jesus. So wherever you are, if you are able, we ask you to stand and remembering that we become what we worship and the thing and the person we most want to become like is the King, Jesus himself. Let's stand.
Father, uh, we thank you that you are mighty, that you are above everything and also with us where we are, bringing us to that heavenly place. Lord, be with us today as we look to hear your word for us and as we look to be closer to you as you draw close to us. In your name. So, as we begin this pilgrimage of meditation, to give you a little bit of context about, about the importance of, 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 of pilgrimage, that word. I, um, earlier this year, I found myself in northern Spain, uh, walking 800 kilometers from the border, uh, borders with France in the east, uh, all the way to the northwest to a city called Santiago. Uh, this wasn't a random walk. This is actually one of the most historic and popular pilgrimages uh, in, in the world and um, has been walked by pilgrims for 900 years, though has recently enjoyed a, a huge surge in popularity due to I can't exactly tell you why, but various various famous people doing it, and and also kind of this, I think, sense of of, of spiritual lack, and uh, you know the pilgrimage promises something, it definitely promises something, and, and you you meet you you can tell when you meet other pilgrims on the way, um, the 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 it's called the the Camino de Santiago, or in English the the Way of Saint James, most commonly known as just the Camino. Um, and it was one of the most important Christian pilgrimages in the Middle Ages, alongside the pilgrimage to Rome and Jerusalem. Santiago means Sant Iago, which is St. James, one of Jesus' apostles, and the cathedral there holds the bones um, of, supposedly, the bones of the apostle. Uh, the history is a little dubious. Um, now, there's a dark side to the history of pilgrimages in the sense that there was this understanding that if you walk the pilgrimage, you could receive an indulgence um, from the Pope or from the Catholic Church and, and be f- kind of, your sins would be forgiven or at least a portion of them, uh, which would lead to kind of this anxiety and this, this works kind of understanding of righteousness. However, amidst that all, the, the pilgrimage also has this wonderful quality of serving as an allegory for, for the journey that is life and, and, and the journey that is faith. Um, the, the physical experience of the road and, and the lessons you learn on that journey reveal the more subtle but all-encompassing journey that is life. Uh, the journey that is, that is Jesus as well. He says, I am, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I, I was reminded of this when I arrived in Santiago after a month of walking. Um, I, I went to the English Mass. I was the only person there. And uh, there was, it was a Filipino Catholic priest. He invited me for breakfast afterwards. We had a lovely conversation. And he said, you know, this is really where your pilgrimage starts. Um, you know, you, you going home. This is the beginning of the journey. And, and I think we experienced that at the new year. You know, we finished one journey, the journey of 2020, which was, which was something. And, and, uh, but, but the end kind of also signifies a beginning. Um, you know, Jesus said, it is finished. And, and, and there, that's where our life, you know, begins. So today, I will be offering some um, of my reflections of my, uh, from my experiences. And um, as, we, as we begin, to, as we journey together, uh, it's important that we recognize principles um, guidelines for this pilgrimage to help us really enter into the life that it offers us. The first being, follow the guide. I was immensely aided on the way to Santiago by yellow arrows. It, it's such a popular route that actually around every corner there's a yellow arrow telling you to go. So you can go with no mobile, no physical map, and for the most part not get lost, although I did get lost a few times. Um, and, and that was a real blessing for me because I am, I am not spatially aware. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going. Um, so, um, yes, but, but in order to arrive at my destination, I needed to yield to the direction of, of another that wasn't myself. 
So in a similar fashion today, we humbly ask you to yield to our guidance as we look to illuminate the journey of faith and follow the ultimate guide, Yeshua from Nazareth. From Nazareth. So we'll begin with, uh, let's, let's read the Bible. Let's read the, <laughs> the word of God. <laughs> Does help. Um, yeah, so today we're going to be reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. I'm going to quickly pray. Father, Holy Spirit, illumine your word to us. Help us understand and see you. Amen. Okay, so uh, this is from the third chapter of Philippians, Philippians 3. We're starting in verse 7, and we're going to continue to verse 16. But whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Jesus Christ. The righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings. Because like him in his death, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained all this or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. The prize, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenwards in Christ Jesus. All of us who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. This is the place you have attained. Right here, wherever you are, right now. To know where you are, you must know where you are going and from where you've come. Today we will venture along a way that will hopefully allow you to meditate, both meditate on both of these places, the past and the future. And in doing so, we'll draw you closer to the only moment that you have, the present, where we can meet the presence of God. So let us begin with the question, from where have we come? The apostle says he forgets what is behind. But this does not involve an ignorance of the past. Now if forgetting is an active thing, if it involve, which, which Paul does seem to suggest, he says one thing I do, he forgets. It's an act of his will. Then it must involve a confrontation of the behind a seeing of the behind before leaving it and forgetting it. We also must recall that that the Lord, the God we worship, is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of history, of personal relationship. The one who was born into our time and our place, found in the history books. Our faith, our 
our, our Bibles, the Word of God, is constantly calling us back to remember the past and what God has done for us. But not so we can stay in the past. So church doesn't become some sort of reenactment of the, of the biblical stories where we seek to become, you know, 6th century BC Israel or 1st century Palestine. No, no, we're called to that place to encounter the transcendent God so we can carry his presence and calling in and on our lives into the now and into the yet to come. So this part of the service where we ask from where we have come It has a dual purpose, to remember and to forget. In the Torah, God called his people to remember the day he brought them out of Egypt, the day of salvation, of freedom, and also the day they rebelled in the wilderness, the day of disobedience and rebellion. We now remember both of those days. In the life of Israel, and in our own. What are the testimonies of freedom from this year? What can we celebrate? And how can we give thanks? Where have we strayed? Where have we turned from the Lord? Rebelled against his love and goodness? Where have we failed to shine and be Jesus' hands and feet? Where have we preferred comfort rather than calling? Where do we need to repent? And who do we need to forgive? The second principle of the way of the pilgrimage. Don't carry what you don't need. Otherwise, you'll hurt your knees. That's what I was told very, very soon after my arrival into Pamplona, which is where I really began my journey. Uh, I was told that when you're walking a long way, you're going to feel any bit of extra weight. So if you don't need it, don't bring it. Someone even told me of, of, of pilgrims cutting their toothbrushes in half to save a few grams from their load. I, I have a, a little more um, emphatic story of leaving things behind. I arrived, um, threw out a backpack, which I was told was, was not good for my back and was broken, uh, bought a smaller backpack and then sent home 10 kilograms worth of things uh, to London, which actually weighed more than the, the bag that I carried for the rest of the walk, which was about eight kilos. Um, just tip, if you're ever going on a long walk, don't bring your laptop. You don't need it. But, but I say this because we have remembered, if you think of memory as, as, as the load, or the past as the load that we carry on our backs, you know, we've, 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 we've gone through the backpack And we haven't taken it off yet. But now we must forget. We must lay down that which is not bringing us forward. We take what we need. Bring your toothbrush. But maybe you don't need all of it. So that we can strain toward what is ahead. To take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of us. I was thinking about when, when Jesus sends them in twos, I think there are a few accounts of him, of, of him sending the disciples out to bring the, the, the kingdom of God, but 
at one point he, he sends them really with nothing. He says, don't, don't even bring extra pair of sandals. Just go. So yeah, let's take a moment now to reflect on what we're carrying, what we need to leave behind. And through it all, through the testimonies of freedom and the experience of rebellion, let us remember God's faithfulness, that he stayed with us. So now we sing, great is thy faithfulness. Father, thank you for your faithfulness. Jesus, thank you that you are with us. We went back, but only so that we could move forward with a greater power and purpose. But where is forward? Where are we going? The apostle says there is one thing he does. Verse 13, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize 
for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. One thing that Paul does. Lighthouse, it's important that we know that we have a prize. There's a lot of words that that Christians can use for the prize, but the, the ones that first came to me was the hope of glory. The, the presence of God in our lives, both now and forever, the reign of his kingdom, his goodness, his freedom. We have the promise of Jesus that we will see him face to face. Is that where we're headed? Is that the prize of our life? Earlier in the chapter, the Apostle Paul, just before this reading, the Apostle Paul talks about the prizes of the flesh, the things that he could put confidence in if, if that was what was his righteousness. He talks about the prizes of family heritage, of him being a Hebrew of Hebrews. He talks of his social status as a Pharisee, his, his biblical knowledge, his religious zeal, persecuting Christians, and, and his moral lifestyle. He says, according to the law, I was faultless, flawless. But then he says that he counts these things as rubbish. These are good things, things that, that for the most part, we probably really value socially in the church. Religious activity, um, reputation, knowledge of the Bible. But he counts them as nothing. Not because he's nihilistic. No, in verse 8 we read that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is from God. That which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. Jesus is something more than those things. I see our prize. Because we go where our prize is. When I'm at college and I really want an A, I spend a lot of time working. <laughs> what prize are we seeking at this moment? Do we need to change direction? If we return to the idea of the pilgrimage, you know, the destination is the price. I'm, I'm only going this way. I'm only going west because that's where Santiago is. That's where, you know, supposedly this great promise of something is. But it was interesting. There was a moment where, you know, you go west to Santiago. It's, it's, but there was a moment where I, I was feeling drawn east, going backwards along the trail. And sometimes it may feel like that, like going forward is, is going backwards, like the, you know, the, the salmon or the trout, I don't know which fish it is, swimming upstream. You know, everyone's going this one way. You know, the, you know we, we live in a progressive time. You know, the, like, you know, the, the world with technology and science, we're always progressing, we're always being able to do more in less time. But what if forward was standing still or going backwards? What if the Lord wanted us to stop because he needed us to look around, to see something we weren't seeing or we're not seeing? Another important thing to mention is, is as we stop or as we go backwards, we or even as we see the prize, we see Jesus as our prize and we see how far away we are from being like him or, or being how we would like to be. I, I had this moment about a week in, I kind of took a day of rest. I was, I was very convicted by another Christian actually I met on the pilgrimage. She said, you know, God took a day of rest and I was like, oh yikes, I need to stop. So I took a day of rest, I was really tired. And uh, I remember looking at, I was about, I'd walked a hundred and something kilometers, but there was still about 600 left. I remember looking at a map and I was so tired. And I was like, 
I do not know how I'm going to do this. <laughs> I was like, this is, re this is really, really a long way. Um, but, but, but one thing you, you, if you ever walk the Camino um, is, you know, it's in Spain. And one thing that the pilgrims always say to each other is, well, and, and people along the way, they all say, poco a poco, little by little, one day at a time. You know, why focus on the destination 600 kilometers away when, you know, the place you're going tonight is 25? Let's just, let's just, and the crazy thing is, is you start racking up that 25 kilometers and you're there eventually. Yeah, so, so where are we going? Where are we going? If it feels far, Know that it's one step at a time. And it doesn't have to be the way that maybe people have told you or maybe you think it should be. Forward is Jesus when he is the price. Forward is anywhere where he is the price. So we're going to move into another hymn singing, I surrender. Lord, we surrender the prizes we've made in our lives that aren't you. And we come back to the place where you are the prize. Let us, let us sing.
So it's time, having left what we don't need behind through that remembering and forgetting and also recognizing where we may not be headed toward you, we now step into the present of your presence, Lord, at a time of communion. First, we receive your forgiveness afresh, Lord, having repented of those things where we did rebel in our past and those idols that we were worshiping in our future. We hand them to you and we receive and exchange your truth, the truth of your love, the truth of your freedom, the truth of your forgiveness. So we just, we just receive that afresh right now, people of God, as we prepare our hearts to receive the Lord in his body and blood through the simple gifts of these bread and wine. So I want to invite us, wherever you are, you may want to get some bread and some wine or some juice. But here in the church, we remember the night that he was betrayed, where he was having supper with his friends, and he took the bread and he said, take, eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And at the end of the meal, he took the cup of wine, again gave thanks, gave it to his friends and said, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So Lord, we ask that these humble gifts of bread and wine or juice would be to us your body and your blood and that they would transform us from within, that they would bring your healing, your wholeness, and fill us with your grace, connecting with you in communion by your spirit. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts with thanksgiving. Amen as we receive the Lord afresh today, we also worship him in this final song, Your Presence is Heaven in Me. Receive and worship his presence in the present. Amen. Matchless love and beauty, endless worth For nothing in this world can satisfy Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Matchless 
Thank you for your presence, for the promise of your presence to the end of the age. As the vicar Samuel says, Lord, you free us from the prison of the past, from the fear of the future, to be with you here and now in the present. Hmm. 
We're going to say the post-communion prayer together. Join in if you know it. Father of all, we, we give, give you thanks, thanks and, and praise, praise that when that we, we were still, still far off, off you, you met us in your son and brought us home. home. Dying and, and living, he declared your, your love, gave, gave us grace and opened the, the gate of glory. glory. May, May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. May we who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so we and all your children shall be free. And the whole earth live to praise your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. That, that brings this pilgrimage, this journey, this meditation to a close. But as, as the poet T.S. Eliot so wisely says, and as the Catholic priest that I met in Santiago reminded me, what we call the beginning is often the end. And to make an end is to make a beginning. The end is where we start from. So this, 2021, may this be a beginning for you. A beginning to pursue the prize that Christ has called you heavenward. To take hold of that which Christ took hold of you. So Lighthouse, be free. Shine in the world. Spread the love and the light of Christ to those around you. And go deeper yourself into the journey of faith and the revelation of the hope of glory. Amen. Amen. So we'll look forward to seeing you next week. We're back in church January 10th, live band, all going well. And sign up is open. So do sign up on the website if you'd like a seat in the house. Otherwise, tune in on YouTube. In His Presence is the 13th, the following Wednesday, and Alpha starts on January 21st. So do be praying about whom you'd like to invite, or actually if you yourself are meant to either serve on the team or attend. All those things are great, and we look forward to seeing you at one or all of them. In the meantime, bless you, and we'll see you soon. Much Bye. love. Be